Welcome to Behind the Bar by Grey Goose. In this episode, we're giving you some pro tips on mixing skills. Whether iced or served up, every great drink starts with high quality spirits, and we're gonna teach you those skills to measure, mix, and pour your serves so that your character of the drink comes through every time. So obviously your standard measuring tool will be a jigger. This is a Japanese style. Two ounces on the long side, flip it around, and you're gonna max out at three quarters ounce. If you don't have a jigger available, pretty sure that you have a shot glass. This is gonna measure out at about an ounce and a half, so it'll take some of the guesswork out. What if they don't know exactly how big their shot glass is though? I'm glad you asked. Everyone should have a spoon at home, and this is about a half ounce. Count your spoonfuls. I love that little life yes. hack. Everyone I definitely has a spoon at home. And then last, for those who have a cobbler shaker, all you need to do is measure with the top of your shaker, and then you have another jigger. All right, well, I'm gonna talk about how we mix it up. So okay. after we measure into our mixing glass or our shaker tins, we gotta shake it or we gotta stir it, right? You're always gonna wanna make sure you add your liquids and your ice into the smaller part of your shaker when you're using a two-piece shaker. And why is that? This is so you don't overflow. Yes. If you measure things based on the volume in here and then you go to seal these two pieces together, a bunch of liquid's gonna come out because this obviously holds more than this side. So you're gonna wanna make sure you fill the smaller side so that once you're shaking, you have plenty of space to move everything around. Yes. And when you do fill with ice, you're gonna wanna be pretty full because you wanna make sure that you're getting as cold as fast as you can. So the more ice you use, the more aeration you get, the more dilution you get, the colder your drinks get more quickly. And so once you are shaking, you're going to lock your two pieces together and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your motion is making the ice hit the top and the bottom of your vessels. And you're gonna to wanna to shake with rhythm and for about 10 seconds. That way you should be getting maximum aeration and dilution and chilling on your cocktail. But that's not the only way to mix up a drink, right? We've got stirred drinks. So I like to use mixing glasses with a mixing spoon. I think it's the easiest way to create a beautiful cocktail. And when you get your mixing spoon, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the back of the spoon is against the glass. So you sort of want to do a circular motion, making sure that the back of your spoon is constantly against your mixing glass. And as you can see, it's really all in the fingers. There's not a lot of motion happening anywhere else. And you're going to want to do that for about 30 seconds or 50 rotations, depending on how diluted you like your drink. And that should be good to go once you pour it out into your glass. Now, when it comes to pouring, pick up our Hawthorn strainer. For those who are new, you're gonna have your index finger that's gonna rest on top of the strainer so it gives you control so it doesn't flop all over the place. Then you simply pour into your glass. Again, that's for the more advanced that can handle that type of control. If you can't, no shame in the game for using two hands to pour into your glass. And if you're pouring out of a mixing glass because you have a stirred cocktail like an old fashioned or a Grey Goose Martini cocktail, you simply would have your julep strainer to rest on top of your ice and I like to go with the low and slow pour, simply because you want that texture to be silky smooth and almost have that velvet mouthfeel, versus if you just rush and dump everything in, you're gonna get ice chips into your glass and just not to get that mouthfeel that you're looking for. Definitely, and I think there's just a lot of things to keep in mind when you are preparing cocktails, but really this is a great foundation for you to start shaking things up, yeah. mixing things up, pouring things, measuring things at home. And as always, practice makes perfect, so keep working on those skills. What other tips would you like to know? Let us know in the comments. And for more great drink recipes, just click below.